Next item on the agenda. All eyes up on the testifiers <coughs> table. Welcome, Chair Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Next Chairman. 2874, go ahead, Represent uh, well, Chair Hamilton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I'd like to move House File 2874 to be referred, re-referred uh, to the Committee on Civil Law and Data Practices. And Chair Hamilton moves that uh, House File 2874 be re-referred to the Committee on Civil Law and Data Practices. Representative Hamilton, please present your bill. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll be very brief because I have a remarkable young man that uh, I think everybody's going to really enjoy hearing from. Um, this bill, Mr. Chairman, would actually expand uh, the bill that I believe you carried uh, in 2015 uh, that provided immunity from liability for agritourism activities, uh, breakfast on the farm, et cetera, and uh, provided that the agritourism operator does not um, act negligently or willfully against the visitor. Um, this would expand uh, what is covered as agritourism to also include agriculture-related educational programs or demonstrations that are not carried out on the farm. Um, and with that, Mr. Chairman, I think I, I want to hold off on the amendment at this point in time and turn it over to uh, my very special guest. Um, we, I know we had on the list uh, a whatchamacallit uh, to come in here and, and testify, but uh, whatchamacallit uh, didn't feel up to it today, uh, is my understanding. So we brought whatchamacallit's father, which is Quiet Wyatt. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mr. Smith uh, to introduce himself and uh, share with you the importance of this bill. Mr. Smith, welcome to the committee, and please uh, state your name for the record here. We're pretty official up here, and uh, then proceed with your testimony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and all the representatives here today. My name is Caleb Smith, and I am the founder of a business called STEM Bunnies, and we teach kids about science while playing with rabbits. And we also do, we do lots of activities which include egg hunts and Girl Scout activities and and going to parks and and going to the state fairgrounds and lots of other places that aren't at our farm. So my bunny T is um, is based off. Well, is well, the is the inspiration for the new blue bunny bunny, <laughs> and I have a bunny. Well, I have eleven bunnies that are like Wyatt, and we take their fur and we shear them, and we can and we can use this to make mittens and gloves and hats, and we're based with the person that's in Oregon. Who has, who has the deal with Ralph Lauren? So I'm here today to add a little bit from the agritourism bill that was passed last year, which helped us a lot. Um, I want to add that if if the farm or the ranch brings their activity to a different place that isn't their farm or ranch, like a school or a park or a church, that they will be covered with insurance. And most schools can't afford, or some schools can't afford to go to the farm or the ranch and because because of money or lack of funds so if if they could if we could bring our program to other places and be covered with insurance the, then the kids can still be educated with things that with oh, with stem um And one of the big things about our business is we we um, we do things at we do things by donation, so we can still teach kids about science 
to the schools that can't afford to have that can't afford to do a high a high expensed program. You're doing great, Caleb. Carry on. So thank you for your time and I'm open to questions. First of all, Caleb, uh, I don't think anybody mentioned um, what grade you're in and, and how old are you? I'm 11 years old and I'm in fifth grade. Okay, pretty impressive. Thanks. Questions? <laughs> Representative Poppy. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Mr. Smith. Thank you for your testimony. I, I appreciate that you are an entrepreneur and uh, obviously have a growing business and are going to be even more successful in years to come. So I appreciate that you've brought this idea to us. Can you tell me when you started your business and how you made the connection to the person in Oregon? Hey, so, go ahead. Go ahead. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so two years ago, I found 362 rabbits on Craigslist shortly after Easter. So I wanted to save the bunnies. So that's how I got to having a business which can foster rabbits, and then as a side part, we can do activities with science. And... Mr. Chairman, if I could finish the statement. Um, I'm Stephanie Smith and I'm um, part of his organization. I do work for Caleb. <laughs> Anything else? Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> um, just related to bunnies, though. <laughs> so um, when he found the rabbits, we live in Bloomington, and there's city codes that you can have four rabbits there under the age, or over the age of six months. And so I shared with him that it'd be impossible for us to do this. So he came in with a business plan and said that if we as a community would be able to help take care of the rabbits, that we might be able to do this collectively. And then he started connecting the dots, looking at all the different rescues. Why are the animals staying in the rescues? And he thought, well, if the teachers would do the, I guess, the marketing for us, if he would share them with the schools, if it would be an education-based program rather than it just be a rescue organization and trying to get people to take an animal into their home, if there was some sort of a curriculum. So we have a curriculum de developer who's worked with us and we have eight weeks of programs that go along with the state standards at each of the different age levels. So if a teacher borrows a bunny or if the program comes into their classroom, then they're able to go through this curriculum that goes along with the state curriculum standards in science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, and so there's lots of different educational programs. Um, it fits along with the Boy Scout merit badges. Um, it fits along with Girl Scouts. He's done 4-H programs. He has 35 volunteers that are his age and a little bit older who are out and about with their families taking the bunnies out. We currently have insurance of our own. Um, and we really do appreciate you passing the agritourism bill for last year. That protects us when we're at the farm. But I think where Caleb is coming from is this idea, what happens if we take the program to someone else? And one of the challenges is um, if a school would say, well, that's great, it protects you if we go to you on a field trip, but we don't have funds. It costs a lot to take a bus out to your site. Could you bring your program to us? And then the next question that follows is, what about your insurance? Can we be added as an additional insured? They want to know about their liability as the site host. Or if it's a Girl Scout troop or a 4-H group, they want to know, are they covered if our animals, and again, we realize that this is just a bunny business, but it does also carry over to other animals. So they have to be regulated um, through the USDA. We're not looking for just having anybody bringing animals all over the place indiscriminately. It's actually related to animals that would be in a regulated program or that is designated as exempt. So there's a lot of legwork behind the scenes to be in the category of what we're trying to get past. The second question we get a lot is, what about rabies shots? Um, and so for those of you who don't know much about bunnies, if a rabbit would get rabies, they would die pretty quickly. So actually the, immune, the test for rabies was developed with rabbit blood because they are so susceptible to rabies. So rabbits don't have any immunization, um, but they do need to be checked by vets. It is, you know, we just still have to work with vets to make sure that animals are safe. Just like any other regulated farm would have to have their animals checked, hello, um, before they would be able to bring an animal to a school site or to a program site. Thank you, and thank you for your question. 
Representative Nornis, go ahead. Oh, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Caleb, uh, seeing how well behaved that bunny is, I've got a cat. Do you take trades by any chance? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. <My> Smith? <laughs> You can say no. A follow-up. Actually, the question I've got is, uh, that is that a specific breed, breed of, of a bunny that's, because it's, it likes to be handled apparently, it's very tame, and the bunnies I see just run through my yard and, and don't want to be caught, so. Is there a specific breed? Uh, Halo, bunny? go ahead. So this bunny is a English Angora, and like I said earlier, you can shear him and you can make mittens and gloves and hats. That's the main reason why why this bunny, well, well why people breed this bunny and they take care of him. Okay. They're really hard to take care of because of their fur uh, and they get and it gets matted, so it's hard to brush out. Uh, Mr. Chair, I Representative Nornis. Does the cat, I mean I know a cat doesn't like to even brush. When you shear an animal like that, is he okay with that? Is he? Hey, go, go ahead. So, bunnies like Wyatt love to be, um, love to get sheared because in the summer, well, Angora has eight times, seven times more than wool. So, if it's over 80 degrees in the summertime, he would die of heat exhaustion because he's too hot so if when we take his fur and use it for the fur he loves it because now he can cool down in the summer he stays away from the mirror i suppose he'd look funny when wouldn't he <laughs> A little bit funny bunny. Yeah, funny bunny, yeah. Um, to, to follow your question. Um, Mrs. That, Smith, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Um, the, the rabbits that you see in your backyard are wild, where these are domestic rabbits that are in our program, and we have several of the endangered breeds. There's an organization called the Livestock Conservancy, and so when Caleb first went online and he saw some of the rabbits that were available on Craigslist, that were some, there were some that were listed as one of these endangered rabbit breeds, like the Americans. Um, the ones that you see in your backyard are like the cottontails, and those are all wild rabbits as opposed to um, domestic ones. You wouldn't see these running out in your backyard likely. If they are, then somebody abandoned them. Oh, sure. And so part of our program is doing a lot of education about responsible pet ownership um, and tying that to the agritourism piece. Um, we have lots of people who are asking about textiles, and so we have units that are teaching specifically about the, the textile industry, working with the sheep farmer like out in Oregon um, and the ones here in Minnesota. So there's lots of connect the dots, um, and then when they come out to the farm, we, there's beekeeping, um, and they can go out to the orchard, and they can pick berries, and so it's, it's just opening the door to all these other things at the farm. The bunnies, as Caleb says, are science in a cute fuzzy package. Not all kids are excited about Legos or robots or coding. So we are a soft way to get kids excited about science who may not think that science is cool or fun. And all of a sudden, they're engaged with the rabbits, and we go from there. Thank so you. yes, there is a different kind of breed, um, but the ones that are selected to our program have to be obviously very docile and, and ready to be held. We don't just accept all bunnies into the okay, program. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Caleb, when you were visiting earlier, you talked. Could you mention how often you can shear the rabbit? And uh, you said the white fur is is the one that's more in demand. Could you explain why? Um, because white is easier to dye, and you can shear bunnies every two months, and they produce one kilogram of fur a year, which is two and a half pounds. Okay. And it's, it's really, really soft, too, isn't it? Yeah. Would you care to pass that, that uh, not the rabbit, but uh, <laughs> you have some yarn? <laughs> pass the yarn around? <laughs> I think you'll be, be amazed at how, just how soft that, that is. Anybody in the audience who would care to testify on this bill? And just a clarification, Caleb, a couple of times you mentioned that this bill would provide you insurance. That's not exactly what the bill does. It, it, it grants you a, a level of, of immunity from, from, uh, from uh, 
the conditions that they we're talking about. So don't confuse this with, the, with any kind of insurance, and I'm sure mom can explain that to you. But it gives you a level of protection up to, uh, I believe, the misdemeanor type of uh, a situation. <laughs> any other questions? If not, Representative Hamilton. Any uh, final thoughts? Uh, you know, Mr. Chairman, we do have an, uh, an amendment here. A uh, few people have talked to me about it. Uh, I think that this will, um, um, we could take this up, work on it a little bit more between here and civil law in the event we do pass. So I think we're not gonna offer up the amendment at this time, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, but uh, I guess uh, if there's no additional questions or, or comments, I would just like to renew my motion. So Chair Hamilton renews his motion that House File 2874, as amend, uh, I'm sorry, not as amended, as, as it stands, be re-referred to the Committee on Civil Law and Data Practices. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Okay. Well,